Welcome once again to my channel. My name is Ogbe Edward Munoyo. And on this particular series, we are telling medical stories. In other words, trying to make help medical students make the right decisions, pre-med, in med school, and post-med, and also for all healthcare professionals that just want to listen to medical stories and um, just stops around that. So today we have a very important person today, my brother. So I would just allow him to um, introduce himself. So welcome, Dr. Kwe. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Edward. Yeah, my name is Lukan Okolo. I'm a Nigerian and um, I went to medical school in Ukraine, Kharkov National Medical University. I graduated um, like five years ago. I mean, yeah, five years ago, someone just sent me a picture, like Facebook reminded them, like it was five years ago I graduated from medical school. And yeah, 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 from Backup National Medical University, I uh, did my house, my internship in Nigeria, one year internship in Nigeria, and um, did my youth service call in Nigeria as well, and um, worked in the private sector in Nigeria as well for like two years, and I'm currently studying my um, internal medicine residency in the United States in a couple of days. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. And well done for the hard work. And um, Thank you so much. I hope that um, you get to inspire more people and through this content, um, people will listen to you and be able to achieve, achieve their dreams as well. All right. So um, I have a couple of questions today just surrounding um, graduating from medical school, especially um, this content is tailored to foreign trained doctors, although I know that um, some other people may get unnecessary information from this, as most of the information will be universal. So, um, but to tailor it specifically, you graduated from Ukraine, um, medical school in Ukraine, Harkov National Medical University, and then you went back home. Um, I would love to ask this question. Um, a lot of other doctors I have interviewed, um, they've said, going back home and practicing in Nigeria is not really um, fun and exciting and they give their various reasons. So for you, um, what do you think are the advantages or the disadvantages of moving back to Nigeria after medical school to practice? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's always important that we all know what our plans are, okay? So if you say you don't want to go back to Nigeria, I mean, what are your alternative plans? You know, so if your plans are better than going back to Nigeria, sure, why not? But for me, I, I went back home. I mean, I didn't plan to actually stay back in Nigeria, but, you know, circumstances happened and I had to, you know, stay back. And my approach to life really is wherever you are, every point in your life, it's important that you try to do something to move forward. Always make the best of every moment. So when I go, when I go back home, I, you know, did some electives and stuff. Then I you know, did my MBCN exam. And I did my housemanship in Nigeria, which I think was my first exposure to clinical practice. And mm -hmm. um, I can say for sure that, you know, it helped me use my confidence. I was able to do so many things in terms of hands-on practice. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I think it was, it was a good one, really. Yeah, so I think this is what I That's did. great. Fantastic. I would like to just repeat what you've said. I think it's a very important point, wherever you are, and uh, make sure that you're doing your best to move forward. And um, one important thing you said also was that you know your plans and um, don't just get stuck hanging or doing whatever, make sure that you put yourself together. All right, thank you. That's really inspirational. <laughs> Next question I have here. Um, when did you know that the US was a plan for you? When did you know that you wanted to practice? Is this something that you just stumble on or you've known from the get-go that you wanted to practice in the US? Mm, well, I mean, when I, when I got into Ukraine in 2010, I, I think I mentioned it to a senior of mine, it was in his final year at the time that I, I mean, I really wanted to go to the United States for my first year. And he made it clear to me that the United States is very tough to get into. It's not the system that you want to, um, you know, want to get into as well. So I kind of you know, lost it at that point. I went back to Nigeria for my third year clinical practice. I, I kind of enjoyed the housemanship experience. I was looking forward to actually going back to Nigeria after medical school. Mm -hmm. You know, until I, you know, met one of our seniors who had done the steps. You know, mm -hmm. and, um, that particular interaction changed my whole life. 
you know, mm -hmm. because it made me realize that, yes, there's somebody from Ukraine doing these things, and I can do it as well. And mm -hmm. then that was when, and I thought to myself, I mean, I had different options, the UK, the US, and every other place. Mm -hmm. Which system can I start working on right now? I think to get into the UK, you must graduate first, but you can take the cloud. Nigeria, you must carry first. And I said, yes, somebody you can take it as a medical student. I'm like, great. So I think I'd rather start something now rather than wait, you know, before I graduate. And I mean, the American system kind of opens me to residency opportunities. So and that was when I started working on for my fourth year. You know, there's stuff I needed to do. And yeah, now we're here. So I think it was my fourth year for the interaction I had with somebody that made me do that. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, apart from that, you had the personal dream. Um, you also had an inspiration, someone you look up to. Up to. So we'll talk about that. But um, I previously had a conversation with you and you said something that start with the end in mind. Would you like to like um, try to um, expand that as it relates to the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's always important that you, wherever you are, I mean, my, my dad always tells me that, that whenever you get to a place, is what you have not started has not ended. Once you start, the end is near. So you always need to start with the end in mind. You know, it's always important that you think about the end and you need to enjoy the journey. You know, it's not about you spend 10, 20 years doing something. It's not about the time you spend, it's about you know the value you've gained during that time. And value comes from hard work and you know doing mm -hmm. every day, consistent hard work every day. Mm -hmm. So I think it's always important that you you know you go back, you go by it every day like that. Great. Wow, are you always this inspirational? <laughs> ah, nah, just... <laughs> wow, you're just dropping bars. This is nice. <laughs> Before you know, I'll just leave this, uh, go to the US to practice and start taking notes. Wow, that's really amazing. Thank you so much. All right, that's great. So start with the end in mind. Um, enjoy the journey. Doesn't matter how long it takes. I think those are really important points. Okay, so um, you started from your fourth year. Um, so that's when you started pursuing um, your USM list step one. Okay, so um, how long did it take for you to prepare? And um, how did you go about preparing for that exam? Okay, I mean, I the first thing is always information, right? I think for anything in this life, access and information is key. So I, I had someone that, was, that had done it. I asked him a lot of questions about, you know, what do I need to do to get this done? And I think he told me the things I needed to do. So um, I had measured materials, I think Kaplan videos, the first day, the SMLE, first day book, uh, Patoma and all that. Then I started, you know, watching the videos and studying during my fourth year, summer into my fifth year. And I think that was mm -hmm. where I did most of the work. Mm -hmm. you know, I took about 13 months to prepare for the first step, which I took mm -hmm. in my Fifth year summer going to my sixth year, so that mm -hmm. was when I you know, did most of the job. But it was my fourth year into my fifth year when I worked on my first step. Actually, mm -hmm. great. So, um, so can you give us some practical steps? Um, in your fourth year and you're preparing. How did you combine schoolwork and um, preparation for the USMD? Like, was there any clashes in between here and there? And um, how did you manage? We know you said you studied most of the time in the summer, but I believe that sometimes as well, you had some school things to do. So how were you able to combine those two things together? All right. Um, yeah, I, I said I did most of the work during the summer, but of course, mm -hmm. during my fifth year as well, I was in school. I had to juggle mm -hmm. both of them. But um, it was, there's a statement that I always hold there that if you don't take, uh, if you don't, I think tasks, you cannot always shy away from tasks if you want to achieve anything mm -hmm. in this life. And mm -hmm. you must be ready to push yourself, you know, beyond the limits. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. wasn't wasn't easy for me after class and the library. I studied to eat to be I don't sleep. I sleep like five, four, five hours every day. You know, I was trying to just juggle everything together that I knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy, but at the same time, to get to a point where you would have acquired so much knowledge that you know moving mm -hmm. through your schoolwork would be a lot easier, you know. Mm -hmm probably acquired so much knowledge that you don't really need to prepare actively for your classes anymore. It's just really mm -hmm. study some things like an hour before your class and you're good. Mm -hmm. But the initial time, you to take a lot from you, you know, in terms of trying mm -hmm. to juggle both of them. But I think the time will come when you balance out and you'll be good eventually. Great. Um, I would love to know, 
um, how did you handle people who necessarily, because I believe you might have had friends and people, they were not, um, they were not terrible people because everybody has their plan and what they want to go about their life, but not necessarily everybody around you had the same um, dream. So how did you handle when people would want to do other things that you really might want to do? Or maybe other people wanted to rest or sometimes, you know, young people who would be like, ah, ah, why you want to go to the library or you want to read? Um, did you had, have such um, experiences and how did you handle not feeling different from your friends who probably would want to take a different route? Well, I mean, the first thing, the first thing I, I always, I do in my life when I get to a new environment is I find people that, you know, align people that I share the same, you know, dream and goals with, right? Then secondly, um, there's, if you don't know how to say no, you probably won't achieve anything in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it got to a point where, I, you know, I was, let's go hang out. I mean, I was saying no, you know, because I knew what I wanted to do. And in that whole situation, you will lose friends, you will lose certain people. But if you lose certain people in that particular time of your life, it means they weren't meant to be there in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you are working on something great for yourself. Mm -hmm. So anybody that can't wait for it, for it to actualize really, I mean, doesn't need to be there. It probably wasn't meant to be in your life in the first place. So mm -hmm. learning to say no. You know, mm -hmm. of course, work and give yourself that um, reward for hard work, right? Going down once mm -hmm. in a while until you won't burn out. But, mm -hmm. you know, you have more than to say no, and you mm -hmm. must uh, always align with people that share the same dreams as yourself. I think it, that was what really worked for me. Wow, I think that's really very important because um, if we surround ourselves with the wrong crowd, then um, wrong, you know, in the sense like people are bad, but I mean, I'm not compatible with your dreams and goals and you'll have a lot of battles to fight. But right. if we um, surround ourselves with people uh, who majorly they may not be doing what we want, but they support us and our goals. And I think um, this won't really be a question. So I think, like you said, boundaries are very important to be able to say no and to know what's important for you at that season. That's really good. And I think it's important because we are not all, we may all be in medical school, but we are not all going to end up many doctors will end up being fashion 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 mm -hmm. people many will end up being business people many will end up doing some other things and if you have the passion to continue with medicine then i think that um you should do it with your chest like nigerians who say <laughs> all right great so any fantastic story or story around your, your, your step one you want to tell, uh, how you registered, the way you wrote the exam, during the exams, all the things that went on. Did you have any doubts during the exams, waiting for the results, all those things that somebody that wants to write the exam? Did you have um, fear? Was there um, any fear at all before the exam? Like, maybe I will not pass. Maybe I don't know as much as I need to, to pass. Because remind you, you said... During the time you wrote the USM, um, it was about the gradings, the scores, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so it wasn't just passing because most students will know, okay, I'll pass as I then. Right. So, how did it go for you? Yeah. Well, I mean, my mentor told me there at the time because I had this initial thought about USM. USM is actually the most difficult medical exam in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very difficult. It's a nine hours pass, an eight or nine hours test. You know, imagine taking a test, even if your knowledge is good. Physically, you might be burnt out, you know, that might actually mm -hmm. affect your grades. Mm -hmm. You know, and mentioned something to me, said, yes, it's difficult, but it's doable. I mean, mm -hmm. anything that is doable, that means there's a certain things you need to do to get to what mm -hmm. you want to get to. Mm -hmm. So I started then, I mean, I was practically reading about 10, 12 hours every day. Mm -hmm. you know, I did that for 13 good months. And I mm -hmm. tell people that it's not about how much you read, it's about consistent studying. Mm -hmm. You know, you can read 10 hours today and you rest for the next two, three days. Then mm -hmm. you come back and eat 20 hours the next day, then you rest mm -hmm. on that for five days. You won't achieve anything. Mm -hmm. like if it's five mm -hmm. hours every day, so far you are consistently doing that. Mm -hmm. It might take you five years, but you get to what you want to get to. Mm -hmm. But inconsistency mm -hmm. will probably take, make you not to achieve anything really in this life. So that was how we started for me. I just had the mentality that is doable. Then what, what, I, what, are, what are the things I need to, to do to, you know, materials, I got that. So I started doing it every day. So the mm -hmm. materials were, I think, Kaplan videos. I watched Patoma for Pathology. I watched, um, I did what I'm, I did, I was it called U World Question Bank. So mm -hmm. I did that for about, about 10 months. Mm -hmm. Then I kind of had like some assessment tests, which you have to do. If you can't mm -hmm. pass them, then don't go and attend the exam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So when I did the assessment test, 
I passed, I knew I would pass the test, right? But mm -hmm. I didn't know how well I was going to perform because it's mm -hmm. important that you, it's not about passing alone, it's about passing well because mm -hmm. depending on the residency program you're looking at applying to, your mm -hmm. scores also matter. Mm -hmm. You know, but I was sure I was going to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I had an idea that my score would be within this range or probably mm -hmm. more. So I, after that, I paid for the exam, you know, we need some, do some documentations with the dean and all that, then I apply. I went to Dubai for my first step. Yeah, I did the test, eight hours long test. Thank God, uh, yes, it's done. Let's wait for the result for three weeks. And that was like the longest three weeks of my life. You know, yeah, in 2015, then, yeah, I, I could remember in my room mm -hmm. all by myself checking the result. And I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. thank God. To me, and that is always the feeling. Mm -hmm. Always, always the feeling of success after hard work is like the best feeling for me. You know, I've had, mm -hmm. you know, multiple, in the last couple of years, I've had moments where I said, this is the best day of my life and something else happens. I'm like, mm -hmm. but that feeling like of achieving something great after so much hard work. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything so far today, I can like, like, that feeling for me. Yeah. Wow, 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 amazing. So um what um would you say is the importance of community groups? Like joining groups online and having people all over the world who want to take this exam. Right. I mean, first I think I didn't mention that this is a test that you can't take all by yourself. You know, if you want to go if you want to go fast, you go if you want to go far, you go with you know the right set of people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's a test you don't want to take all by yourself because you learn from different you learn from different people strategies mm -hmm. of studies strategies and it's not it's not just about the test alone right for you to get into a residency position here there are so many things you need to put in place you must have a mm -hmm. u.s level experience you must mm -hmm. have experience in research you mm -hmm. must have uh, you know you must another thing I, I didn't mention is you must allow school you must pass through school Mm -hmm. pass through school you must be you must be found doing things apart from medicine mm -hmm. you know, for example while i was while i was um, back in school i think you know i was actively involved mm -hmm. in music yeah I used to sing. then i was involved in student union government i was in the nmsc mm -hmm. actively and mm -hmm. to be honest with you during my interviews those were the conversations that came up mm -hmm. those were the things that you know excite I, i'll be saying so many, let me give an example i'll be saying so many things tell me about yourself i i did this research these guys will be looking at me like, okay. When I mentioned <laughs> back in school, I was actively involved in music. I sang Russian songs. They're like, wow, can you tell me oh. more about that? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, so I think it's important that we interact with people. We try to be, you know, well-rounded, not just mm -hmm. in one, you know, one way. But I think it, help, it helps in professional life at the end of the day. Oh, that's that's really amazing, and that's one thing that um, almost all doctors um, that we've been interviewing here they've been saying: get more involved, expose yourself. So, um, at the end of the day, if it's for smart people, there are smart people all over the world. If it's for scores, there's scores all over the world. If it's for research, there are a lot of people who have done great research. But all these other things are what makes you different and peculiar, and um, we must expose those things. But uh, what do you think? Because um, I've had parents who watch my content. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think um, when a child says, I want to sing, I want to do this stuff uh, for parents who are afraid that probably that would be a little bit of a distraction? What do you think? Or someone who is afraid that maybe this thing may be a little bit distracting if I get involved, you know? Um, I, I understand for maybe things like student bodies, um, it may be a little bit educationally streamlined because maybe mm -hmm. you organize tutorials or you meet with other medical students how about things like singing um art and other talents that may be different or what do you think all right there's there was i mean i always have something to attack like you know an anecdote and stuff mm -hmm. someone told me something that if we did not have to go to school there was no education right mm -hmm. and we just dropped on earth bam mm -hmm. that we should start fending for ourselves what is that thing that you think would Give, put money on your table. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. talent. That's the only thing God has put in anybody. School is just, mm -hmm. you know. So if there was no education, I think one thing that everybody would feed with mm -hmm. is talent, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's 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 just important that you know. Wait for me. Music was not. I, I never saw music as something I went to professionally. Medicine yeah. was it for me, but it was mm -hmm. like my escape route. Whenever I'm you know, overwhelmed with everything, medicine and stuff, I. You know, always go in the music lab, probably rehearsing, singing, and it made me mm -hmm. feel good. 
-hmm. you know so mm -hmm. i mean it's always important that you wait such that my parents know i mean anything i want to do you know i have a, I, when it comes to balancing i'm very good at it so i think mm -hmm. it's a, a matter of balance do you really mm -hmm. want to do medicine do you want to do music mm -hmm. which one which one there you can't do both but you can always try to balance mm -hmm. it out such that you kind of make sure you become both you can't take away yeah. your talent it's something it's part of you so i think it's yeah. always something that we should learn to harness and you know grow with as well yeah. but balancing it is just key yeah, and I think it just boils down to what um, you said from the beginning, knowing what you want to do mm -hmm. and um, tailoring your life according to the plan. You know, if you already know the um, starting from the end, then you will know that, okay, this is the proportion to which this works. And some other people um, that I know delve into some other things in medical school that became great for them and um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're doing really good. So um, I think it's just open. And like you said, um, with a little bit of guidance here and there, you don't just do things aimlessly. Uh, you should really have a target. That's really good. So what was the difference between preparing for step one and step two? Let's get into step two preparation. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, step one was basically majorly basic medical sciences. So it's just like mm -hmm. histology, pathology, and all that. Then step two is clinical knowledge. It was pretty tough for me because, I mean, my clinical knowledge was not, I had not had any, I didn't have any experience about, you know, in terms of patient care and all that, but that was what the test, that's what mm -hmm. test is all about asking mm -hmm. you what the next step in management is, the most accurate, mm -hmm. you know, manage, diagnostic um, test and all that. So I mm -hmm. had to imagine so many things. I had to buy a board in my house. I imagine mm -hmm. I have students teaching, you know, imaginary students, imagine mm -hmm. patients coming in, come with bleeding, what do you do and all that. So it was a lot mm -hmm. of, so step two clinical knowledge is majorly about the clinical part of medicine, which is taking mm -hmm. you know, decisions, the next step management and all that. So. And that took me about eight months to prepare for. So it was like internal medicine, surgery, pediatrics, office and gynecology. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think psychiatry as well, biostatistics. Yeah, I think and preventive medicine and all that. So it took me about eight months to prepare for that. You know, I had my final year was like the long, but like very tough time for me because I had so many yeah. things doing mm -hmm. at that time. I was preparing for my step two clinical knowledge. And I was still actively involved in NMSC activities because we organized mm -hmm. them election at the time of the electoral committee mm -hmm. organized the first catalyst conference then i can remember 2016 yeah mm -hmm. which i was chairman for at the time that i had crop to prepare for you know mm -hmm. and, and i still had exams so when i finished my state exam like three days after i traveled to Dubai for my step clinical knowledge and wow. i came back a day before my graduation wow you know so graduation day i was just there i was thinking about my exam the whole day i wasn't even <laughs> thinking about yeah thinking about the yeah, but we thank God. It was, it was, it was, it was, yeah, so um, I, I know all these things we're planning and um, how it goes, but I just want to emphasize um, because a lot of people are able, are found that when you plan, you're able to combine a whole lot of things at the same time. Many times you may never know that some things were um, possible because what you're trying to tell us is that in between 40 year and 60 year was when you finish your step one and your step two. So, right. and these years are very critical years in the medical school because these are your clinical year, years and all of those stuff. So what were the ingredients you think or the habits that you had that made this possible? Because we know we would love to enjoy your success story. Like, uh, wow, you finished from fourth year to like sixth year. You traveled, you came back. I always know that there is more to all those surface things. So how? How is it possible? Let's say I'm my fourth year and I want to be like you. How is that possible? What should I be doing? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I first thing is you really you must really want it. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's not mm -hmm. about you must really. It's not about someone motivating you at all. Motivation can last mm -hmm. for some time, mm -hmm. right? But I mean, you must really want want it. Really want it, and you put in the work. And putting mm -hmm. in the work requires discipline, right? Mm -hmm. I say I'm going to be talking to Ed, Edward for one hour. Mm -hmm. One hour is one hour. Time is something that you can't joke with. Yeah. You know, I had 40 or 60 years to do what I had it said that this is what I wanted to do. You know, mm -hmm. and I knew that every hour, every second counts. So mm -hmm. I, was, I worked with that time, a time frame. Mm -hmm. I, I, you don't see me in places I'm not supposed to be because I know I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be here at this time. I have like plans for the day, right? I always write, I always write down my plans. Okay, today I'm mm -hmm. going to study 20 pages. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. nothing else happens till that 20 pages is done. Mm -hmm. And I know that in the next six months is what I should have covered, right? Mm -hmm. So if I don't do that in six months, then I will now reevaluate what is going on. Mm -hmm. Is it that my goal is not realistic enough? Or mm -hmm. is it that um, 
I'm wasting too much time, mm-hmm. you know. So that was how I was able to do that. I was writing down my daily goals, daily goals. Mm-hmm. And generally, I was just dedicated to the course. I had discipline, you know, I was disciplined with my time. And mm-hmm. then my, I, I, you know, I mean, I put God as well. God, you can because, mm-hmm. I mean, God is always important in directing you. So mm-hmm. I think I, I really allowed God to direct the whole course. And I think I give him all the glory. Everything was that in the day. Yeah. So it's just discipline, dedication, um, I think there's, there's I, I always call it three D's and a G, but I can't remember. There's discipline, mm-hmm. dedication, determination, yes. Determination, and, yeah. And God, you know, you must be mm-hmm. determined to want, you must really, I mean, it, it will be tough. Nobody says it's going to be easy, but mm-hmm. when you're determined at all, against all odds, you must get it done. Mm-hmm. And that was what mm-hmm. I was, that was how I was able to go through everything. Wow. Wow, great. Um, that's nice. <laughs> so um, what was true step two? Um, let's say I passed my step one and I want to start preparing for step two. Is it fundamentally the same steps of preparation? It's almost the same, but you just need to be open-minded. You know, step one is a lot of facts. Mm-hmm. Step two is more, uh, it's not factual because you can have a question that has five options and all the options are correct. Mm-hmm. But then one, but one is more appropriate. But step one mm-hmm. is not like that. Step one is five options, one is correct, the rest are incorrect, mm-hmm. right? But step two is more of, is a lot more logical than, than step mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. you know? And um, I think, and it's important that the more you, the higher you go, you need to get higher in your steps. These things are things yeah. that you guys, because mm-hmm. for example, I had a, I did 240 on my step one. Mm-hmm. You want to get a 230 on your step two. Mm-hmm. You get something higher than that on your step two CK. Mm-hmm. Because this might raise questions on your, during your interviews. Mm-hmm. So they believe that they, they believe the higher you go, the better you should be, and that's what the training is all about. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so I think those are some of the things. Those are things that will bring in anxiety in your step two CK, mm-hmm. which is wanting mm-hmm. to get better than your step one. Mm-hmm. So, um, can you run us through your personal experience preparing for step two, the exams? Where did you take them? How did you feel? How did you wait for your results? And well, everything. I was, I was, I was. I, I prepared for step ticket for eight months, as like I said. I mean, I did, mm-hmm. I used the Kaplan materials, I used the UWorld. Mm-hmm. UWorld is like key, very, very key in some of the preparation. Then I, um, after my croc exam, I you know, went to Dubai for my step to CK. It was a lot of, it was very tough for me because I was stressed out from this mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and I traveled mm-hmm. and I said, Condition to prepare for. I've not gotten my jacket, I hadn't gotten anything. So I had to, mm-hmm. you know, travel back to Ukraine to do all that. Yeah. So it was, Tough, but it was fulfilling for me as well. Seeing myself, mm-hmm. it was like to meet you to today, it was like the proudest moment of my life. Looking yeah, back yeah. at, you know, the number of things I had to do and how I was able to execute everything, it kind of made sense to me now that there's really nothing I cannot achieve in this world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it was tough. It seemed tough. It seemed like a lot of things at the same time, but I was able to execute mm-hmm. it and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I was done with the test, I was scared. You know, I remember mm-hmm. my dad is like my best friend, so I, I called him like, "Hey, what's up? I'm done and stuff, and um, I really don't know what this is all about." And he was like, "Yeah, you're done. If you pass, don't worry." You know, so I had to wait for another three weeks for my result as well. Mm-hmm. Travel back to Ukraine, my whole graduation, the whole mm-hmm. thing. I wasn't, I wasn't there. I was just thinking about mm-hmm. the test and all. Mm-hmm. And God be the glory, I got better on my CK mm-hmm. on my step one. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's just do the right things, and I think you. You'll, you'll get it right yeah and then you spoke to me about um about the experiment you carried out with your preparatory level for the final your final medical exam proc 2 like we call it in ukraine so right. um can you can you shed some more like light on that story so that uh, most people will be able to um although med- medicine is universal um every exam has its own concepts and basics so um can you share more light on that yeah, I mean, I could remember after my step one, I felt, ha, I mean, okay, you're very knowledgeable, you know so many things. And I was feeling good about myself in terms of my knowledge base. I'm like, yeah, I think I could go into croc with this general. I mean, I, I knew so many things in terms of medicine at basic level to, to the complex and all at that time. That was what I felt, you know. Then we had this pre-croc. I said, okay, let me experiment it. Can I go into the exam with what's my general knowledge? And mm-hmm. I went to 
you know, so I was tired like on the first 20 questions. I didn't know anything. So I did mm-hmm. the test like then I had 20%. So I could remember Madame, I can't remember Madame Oksana, I don't know one of them. Oksana, yeah. Vice Vice Dean, Dean. called me mm-hmm. to our office and they were like, nah, look, and I said, your pre crop is all was so bad. And your clock is like coming up, and you know, you you can't be getting this at this time when clock is like how many weeks away. And in my head, I'm like, Yeah, no, I know, we try to work on it. So I knew that, yes, I wanted, and at that time, it's important that you always weigh yes, I'm listening like a bigger exam. But mm-hmm. at that point in my life, clock was bigger because if I don't pass clock, I can't move forward. Mm-hmm. I knew that I needed to go through the question banks for clock to be able to pass clock. Mm-hmm. So I think you need to know what to do at different levels to move mm-hmm. forward. So the most important mm-hmm. thing is moving forward. Don't mm-hmm. always assume because mm-hmm. you don't want to, you don't want to point yourself as a finger. So I mean, I had to go through the clock questions for a couple of days and I went into the clock. I mean, yeah, thank God I, I did well. So mm-hmm. thank God I, I did that experiment. But I'd experimented, I mean, if I had done that in my exam, I mean, I don't know what, would have, what, would, have, what that would have cost me. You know, but, yeah, mm-hmm. but that was what I did at the time. Great. All right. So how will you put it, the payment? What is the rough estimate estimate for payment for US Emily step one and step two? Is it expensive? Well, I mean it's 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 a bit costly. Mm-hmm. I mean you spend over a thousand dollars for the first step. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, you spend about a thousand dollars for the first step. You spend almost the same price for the step second mm-hmm. step. Mm-hmm. And um, there was step two CS, but we don't have that anymore. Mm-hmm. That would cost you like a thousand six year about. Mm-hmm. We don't have that anymore, so I think that's out of the way. So that's like some cool cash to save, to save. And uh, yeah, and buying books, buying question banks will cost some money as well. Then traveling mm-hmm. to the US for electives will cost some money as well. Mm-hmm. Then if you have to do research, you might have to pay, you know, to publish some of your articles and all that. Mm-hmm. I had to pay some money for some of them. I had to pay to join some organizations to submit my articles, my papers, and all. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, I mean, then application as well. That will cost you some money too. I mean, I think every day you just, you, it's just something that you continue to pay for, right? But then mm-hmm. it might take you like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to complete. But don't think about that money because you're not mm-hmm. paying that once. It's just mm-hmm. something you do over time. Yeah. Over time. All right, great. That out of the way. And I think that will be so relieved. <laughs> it will bring so much relief. And that's why I think we still go back to the beginning, start with the end in mind. Because um, let's say if you already know from first year that this is what you want to do, then um, you can start saving up if you're not really that financially buoyant. And then, um, and of course, if anyone is going to support, you're going to get help before time, you know, if you know your parents maybe are not having that um, large amount of money at once, you could talk to them beforehand and then you guys start sourcing out funds. And of course, be on the top of your game when it comes to information, like you said, so that you know, um, okay, I need this for this level. And sometimes things are big, like you said, I don't know how you kept it at the beginning. You say when you start, you're already finishing. So um, I think it also works with money. If you have to pay over $20,000, by the time you start with the first $1,000, that is the whole process already being reduced as well. And um, let me, can I add something? Mm -hmm. For example, now, certain people, I I know a couple friends of mine who, if it's by knowledge base, they probably are Mm -hmm. dead. They will take the test and all, but financially, you're not there. You know, mm-hmm. you probably have the funds to pull through, and you know, I, at that time I always wish I mean I could help, I could you know help them mm-hmm. out and stuff. But but there's something else, being be pliable. Mm-hmm. I think most of us are somehow rigid, and that kind of makes us get to our destination late, or probably mm-hmm. not get to the destination at all. Mm-hmm. You know, for example, my my goal is to get into the United States, but I know that ah, it's mm-hmm. going to cost me so much money to mm-hmm. get there. You can finish, go to Nigeria, get your MDCN. Mm-hmm. UK is easier to get into, it's cheaper. You can move into mm-hmm. the UK. Mm-hmm. But you know, always have that goal. Like, this is where I am going to. Mm-hmm. But I know you did being pliable is very important. Knowing that, yeah, I know my mm-hmm. goal, but I know that, yes, I have to do this and do this to get to where we want to get to. So it's mm-hmm. not a crime or it's not a bad thing. If you, mm-hmm. it takes you longer time, or so far mm-hmm. you get to where you're going to. Yeah. So I feel like being pliable is something that's good everybody must have as well. 
Yeah, that's very important. Yeah, because um, I think I will get that someone um on the channel to to talk about this. Um, she studied in Nigeria, and um, she finished. She practiced for a while, and then she moved to the UK and did club and all, and now in the US. So um, when you were saying that, that makes a whole lot of sense, especially if someone's watching this from Nigeria and thinking, how could I move? Like being pliable, like you said, is very important. Some other route, some people have taken, um, some people I know, they've also taken the route of Euro. Some other countries, maybe the only disadvantage, maybe just um, that you may have to learn language, maybe language course and et cetera. But, um, if you finish from Nigeria and then you go to those um, countries where you can end better, maybe, and then from from there you can always move to the US. to the US if you so if you so want to. And, and I know people who have taken alternative routes and they just en ended up falling in love, not stuck. They they ended up falling in love with the alternative route. So I think um, being pliable is always very um, important. And um, just giving your stories and inspiration because we don't have your life or they don't have your life and um, all of the factors surrounding um, how you were able to get to where you want to go to. Um, I think you were sharing with me, let's talk about that, about the fact that some people can um, finish immediately from medical school and you know get into residency. So how possible is that? Because that was not your story, but you've um, told me that that's absolutely possible. So yeah, can you share some light with that? It's, mm -hmm. it's very possible. So, for example, now if if I could if I could um, advise my younger self, my first year self, mm -hmm. which would have been mm -hmm. prepare my basic medical science with the USMLE materials. You know, going mm -hmm. to another class with Kaplan, reading those materials as things go on, right? As my mm -hmm. years go on. But then, because for you to take step one, you must have you must be done with your third year, mm -hmm. right? You must have been done with your third year of medical school, and um, I. So once you are done with your third year, in your fourth year, you can take your first step, mm -hmm. right? Then by mm -hmm. your fifth year, you can take your second step. Mm -hmm. Your final year, go to the U.S. for some electives, you know, get your, 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 make, make, make contacts, get your letter of recommendation. While you are in school as well, be involved in clinical research, you know, mm -hmm. involved in research and all those things. And that is all you need to apply. So by the time you are graduating from medical school in June, mm -hmm. you know, Ukraine will leave in June. Application yeah. starts the same June, July, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which application for September that year, and the year mm -hmm. after you go to start your residency. So I think it's just starting from your early. You start early, you can make it in by the end. By the time you have done mm -hmm. your medical school that same year into the system. Yeah. So um, you're advising that from the very first day um you can stop and what do you have to lose though if you practice practice and study with the usml material and you change your mind it still needed information that will still help you so um just that's on time like you said keep moving like wherever you are just keep making progress okay so um i think we've covered everything necessary for the um, medical years so you finished um studying and then you went back to nigeria you got licensed we already have videos on that so i don't want to bore you on that and internship you did your nysc and then you practice so um can you tell us some of the fun things or things apart from the fact that you've given us one already that you were able to get hands on you improved with your clinical knowledge. So all through these years, um, maybe inspire someone because I know that some people may watch this video from Nigeria. Maybe they didn't study from, um, okay. they didn't study foreign from foreign places. I think I would try to break the video and start from here. To, so two parts, the long version and this part, especially from those from Nigeria. So let's say now I'm in Nigeria, whether as a foreign trained doctor or as I studied in Nigeria, we're all in the same boat right now. We are practicing, we have our license, internship. So all those years where you had to wait, um, how did you um, sustain your practice, your heart knowing that, okay, you, you, you may be enjoying the process, but you know, it's taking quite some while to be where you wanna be. How did you move with the okay. system? I mean, I for one really, I don't know, anybody that knows me knows I'm a happy person. I, mm -hmm. I kind of just, I'm not that kind of guy that like, things go wrong. I, yeah, I feel bad for like a day or two and now I'm back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the next thing is, what's the next thing I need to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I thought about it, like, yeah, I'm, I'm now in Nigeria. Yes, people complain mm -hmm. about the system, right? Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, I can kick certain things out of this system. 
Mm-hmm. And um, and one thing I, I was very, very happy about was, I can remember back in Nigeria, there was this stereotype about Ukrainian students. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I mean, I felt so good that I was able to change some people's mindset about Ukrainian students, mm-hmm. you know, and that was something good about the whole experience in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. I, I had an opportunity to lead doctors in Nigeria from, mm-hmm. uh, from UI. That's the Ukrainian mm-hmm. student of nature remember my mm-hmm. spousemanship and that was that ship experience it was fun. Mm-hmm. You know, I enjoyed myself doing everything. I learned, you know, during the whole process, patient care, you know, in the rural mm-hmm. setting, you know, mm-hmm. during that whole process, which I believe is going to come in. Nothing, no knowledge is a waste. You know, no mm-hmm. knowledge is a waste. I mm-hmm. had the knowledge of lab science back in Nigeria. I was able to, I was yeah. watching the lab, yeah. lab scientists and I was able to do I can run a full block count in the lab. I can run thyroid function tests myself in the lab. Mm-hmm. All that I gained from Nigeria, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I think it's um, it was it was an experience I really enjoyed, you know. And mm-hmm. Who knows? I I've not seen my parents in years. I mean, I had to spend like three couple years with them as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was it was fun. It was it was, right. it was really a good time for me. I was just enjoying the whole process, knowing that mm-hmm. eventually it will not come only if you stop. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, it is you want it will not happen mm-hmm. only if you mm-hmm. stop. I wasn't stopping on what I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I knew that this is what I still wanted to do, mm-hmm. right? But at the same time, I was enjoying the process. So far, you don't stop to achieve it. All right, that's really amazing. I want you to advise um, a Nigerian doctor who wants to leave Nigeria to the US. Okay, let's say I practice for a while now. I don't have my step one, I don't have my step two, but hashtag Jack Power, we want to leave and all of all of those stuff and everything. Ah, what are your ad what was the advice that you can give? Um starting the process after practicing for a while. Because maybe you've had maybe you've heard stories, I'm sure maybe you've been exposed to that, or you've seen people who have tried to make one or two process. So what would your advice on watching this video? Maybe they just clicked on YouTube, like wow, this is nice. Um, I would love to leave Nigeria. Oh, somebody left from Nigeria. So what's the advice? Like now we are going back to like step one, step two for someone who is already practicing. Yes. <laughs> it's it's tough, you know. I've had a couple of my you know, senior colleagues back in Nigeria. I was like, yeah, I wanted to, I want to do the exam, but you know, imagine practicing for years and you have to now read back chemistry all over again. You have to read histology all over again. But at the end of the day, it's the price you have to pay. You can't avoid it, you know. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, that's the, to me, I think the really limiting step for them is the steps. Mm-hmm. No matter how, once you can, you know, dedicate yourself to the whole course and take the steps, the rest are little mm-hmm. things. You know, and I think mm-hmm. the US has this thing about year of graduation as well. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, they take, they take, I think the younger you are for medical school, the better your chances of getting into a residency position. But mm-hmm. still, it's not, it doesn't mean it's impossible. I've seen people that are 10 years, 15 years from medical school and they are still getting into the system, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just, I think the really meeting step is the steps, the USMLE exams. Yes, yeah, step one is like mm-hmm. the father of everything. That's what really doesn't want them to take it. I think I don't, I don't have much to say about it. It's just dedicate yourself to the exam. <laughs> Once you can pass it, the rest is easy. Agreed. It's not as difficult anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just dedication, and then um, you just have to be ready to pay the price. So um, when would someone need to write the um, occupational English test, the OET? Oh, okay. Now that's something I just started last year because mm-hmm. it's like um, CS was what we needed to take to be certified mm-hmm. by the CFMG, but mm-hmm. because of COVID, we couldn't do step two CS anymore, and then. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they needed ways because step two CS test you on three different I think spoken English proficiency, you test mm-hmm. your clinical and interpersonal skills and all mm-hmm. that. So um, since CS is out of the way, mm-hmm. the next question is how do they check foreign medical graduates before they get them certified by the CFMG? Mm-hmm. So you can take your OET once you are done with your step two CK. Mm-hmm. So you can take the OET, then once you're done with the OET. I think there are like different pathways now that you need to check. I think you can check it on the ECFMG website, mm-hmm. um, ECFMG.org. You can check that. They will tell you different paths that you can follow to apply for ECFM certificate. You know, so I think yeah, that's what OET can be done after your step two clinical knowledge. Mm-hmm. And once that's you have right. that, you can by the ECFMG. And the exam, how easy, difficult? OET. I mean, I, I didn't take OET, so I really. 
would I had I took the step two CS back in 2019. Okay. So I didn't okay. so I not really I didn't really go through that process. Yeah. All right. Um from other people, do you know anyone who has taken I don't language? think it's so difficult, just a test of English. It's spoken, yeah. speaking, reading, writing. I most people pass it, so I think it's also what's difficult. the difference? What's the difference between that and IELTS? I think it's almost the difference between OET and IELTS is OET is medically inclined. IELTS is mm -hmm. majorly English. OET mm -hmm. is, is writing your writing patient notes. Mm -hmm. The speaking, yeah, I don't know. I think it's more medicine, it's more for health workers than IELTS mm -hmm. is general. OET is for mm -hmm. health nurses, doctors, and all that. So you actually speaking medical med medical English rather than oh. general general English. Oh, all right, right. all right. That's that's amazing. All right, so let's get to the question. Everybody sees at one point at the early part of the year, I got mashed. What does that mean? So it's the wrong thing. So right, uh, I'll just run you through the whole application process because I think mm -hmm. it will make sense that way. So the application season starts in June, which means they mm -hmm. tell you now you can start working on your application. This is personal mm -hmm. statement, your Dean's letter, your transcript, your certificate, and everything. Then um, you apply to programs, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, you apply to like 140 hospitals across the United States. Mm -hmm. Then, on a certain day, like September, there about the programs have access to all your applications. Then now, the programs will start reviewing the applications. Mm -hmm. Once they review the applications, they send out invites to people that they think they like or people that think that yes person qualifies for you know requirement then once they send out the invites then applicants will start going for interviews from september till february there about so interviews mm -hmm. end in february right so let's, let's assume edward had 10 15 interviews the whole season mm -hmm. okay by march first week or first week of march or there about there will be a portal where you have to rank your programs from the first your most preferred choice to your least preferred choice Mm -hmm. Okay, then the program themselves will rank applicants they interviewed from their most preferred applicants to their least preferred applicants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then once you are done ranking, then there's, there's, there's an algorithm mm -hmm. that now tries to match applicants to the hospital. So it's actually in favor of the applicant. You know, so for example, the algorithm comes to Edwards' rank order list to check mm -hmm. Edwards' first hospital, which is, for mm -hmm. example, John Hopkins or thereabouts. Then once you see John Hopkins, then to go to John Hopkins list, where is at Edward on John Hopkins list? I think I'm at Edward, number one. <laughs> is Edward, top, is Edward is number one on John Hopkins list. The automatically mm -hmm. there is there's a match made in heaven. So they mm -hmm. will match them together. Mm -hmm. Assuming Edward is not top on the list, is very mm -hmm. like down on the list, mm -hmm. then they will go to Edward's second choice. Mm -hmm. They will check. Where is Edward? For example, Edward is Harvard. Then they will check what, where is Edward on Harvard's list mm -hmm. till they get a match. If God forbid they don't see any match, then that person goes unmatched for the year. The mm -hmm. person has to apply again the next year. How many universities can I apply to? As much as I can? I mean, as much as you can. I think for IMGs, the more the better, but that's going to cost you a lot of money as well, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I applied to like 129. When I applied, yeah, 129. You know, it's going to cost you. So and roughly, money. and roughly for one application, how much do we pay? I, I don't, it's like the calculation that they use, I don't think it's like per one. But mm -hmm. I, it, it, to call it, that costs me about $3,500 to get for the, like, for, for the 129, right? Yeah. Wow. If we're talking about Naira, that's, it, that's in terms of 1 million Naira for. An algorithm. <laughs> right, yeah. So that's that's it. Yeah. But well, it's doable, like we said, like because at, as at this time you're talking about ma being mashed, um depends, depends on the season. Either you're in your final year of medical school and um which you should have been saving. I think you should have watched other videos if you've seen other doc other videos on the channel. Most doctors encourage that you save um during your medical years don't just blow the money you have medicine is a journey there's a lot of professional exams to take and a lot of things to do so i think most times young people need to learn this all the zara yes it's good to look good sometimes but if you're not really from maybe some buoyant place um i think you should just save some money aside you could also help your sponsors um i believe that some of the process as well 
Um, and, and anybody that is um, helping you or training you, even your parents, when they see that here and there, you're, you're supporting, I think it's a kind of motivation. That's just what I decided to about that. So um, the after being the, the interview, um, I want to ask something about that. Um, we already stated some points that um, doing other things aside medicine will help you. Um, you stated that earlier. What other things can we do to better our chances? You know, apart from um, praying to God that the school you the, the hospital you choose will choose you. Um, what other things can I do? Can I do for to make my chances better? Are there anything right, at all? Uh -huh. I think the first thing is yeah, having the right application, which is good scores, strong letters of recommendation, um, US clinical experience, all right, mm -hmm. then um if you have research great if you don't no problem but if you can great mm -hmm. that's your kind of just puts you makes you a bit more competitive right mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. i think the most important thing really once they call you for an interview means your application is good mm -hmm. all right but what gets you that's what gets you in the system is your interview experience mm -hmm. which is remember we are talking to somebody how interesting were you did they like you when they spoke to you you mm -hmm. sound like somebody they would like to work with so I mm -hmm. think what gets you, what, once, once you get an interview, the application is good. You have good application, right? Mm -hmm. What will get you in the system is actually you interviewing and, you know, sounding like mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think there is an interview skill you need to only everybody needs to learn when the time is mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I All think right. your interview right. like, takes like top on the list. Your interview experience top. takes top on the list, right? All right. Um, how what tips can you give on letter of recommendations? Any tip or you just get from anybody? Uh what do you think? Does it does it really matter the the caliber of the person who recommends or write a letter of recommendation? Yes, I mean, yeah, the world is a very I mean the caliber matters a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. For example, you're applying for internal medicine. Mm -hmm. You need, you need to ensure that your letters are from in most of your letters are from internal medicine doctors. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get letters from surgery for an internal medicine specialty. It doesn't add mm -hmm. And your mm -hmm. application must show a trend that you are really interested in internal medicine. You must have done mm -hmm. in internal medicine, you must have done research in internal medicine. Mm -hmm. You must mm -hmm. have letters from internal medicine doctors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then of course. Mm -hmm. The higher the doctor, the more you know reputable the person is, the better for you. But of course, mm -hmm. something is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Then you can also get from your dean from school. You can get from mm -hmm. your from your from your um, your dean, your rector, your class, your teacher in school. If the mm -hmm. person can say good things about you, depending on your relationship, mm -hmm. about what they mm -hmm. write in letter, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that's oh. about letter letters of recommendation. Where does research and elective come? It comes in during medical school. It can come at, at any time, really. At any mm -hmm. time, it's just it's just a matter of how how inquisitive are you. you mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think this thing we do in Ukraine, I see conference. Where I see those see. things. I do you know that <laughs> just a shift. I didn't know how important those things are, but I, I just give myself sometimes to school. You know, sometimes when you just do things right, mm -hmm. like I can't, I can't really own on to this knowledge. Like I knew it, I didn't know most of these things. But you know, sometimes some of these teachers they force it on you. Even sometimes you're even angry. I'm, the many times I'm angry, like why does this woman want me to write these things? And many times you don't know these people are even having papers and they're involving you. So please right. shed some light on those things, like. Many times, many students will run away from those things. I don't want extra work. I just want to finish my exams and leave. How dangerous is that kind of mindset? I mean, it's, it's very dangerous, really, because all these things help. Those are the things that make up your, your CV by the time you're done, mm -hmm. you, you mm -hmm. know? And um, research is not a big deal. It sounds like a big, a big thing. When mm -hmm. something really, you can start from, you can actually, you can actually, as, can be as small as your teacher wanted to write, write a paper and you're translating for her. Mm -hmm. and your name, all you need is your name to be on the paper. Mm -hmm. It can be as small as you just reading through some papers, doing the proofreading for them. But once mm -hmm. you are involved in it, your name will be on the paper, right? Mm -hmm. Then even when we're going to be even going to the clinical part of research, it can be as simple mm -hmm. as case reports. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you, are, you are on the words and you see an interesting mm -hmm. rare case. That is mm -hmm. published what You can publish that. You can write the case mm -hmm. reports. 
You don't need to mm -hmm. do anything special. Just what you're doing is for so far confidentiality is not breached. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can write the case report, find a journal that, 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 that that's probably doing the conference, submit mm -hmm. it there, and if that's how you that's how you start getting papers. Okay. So you said it's not it seems like a big thing, but it's not it doesn't have to be going to the lab and all that is there, mm -hmm. but it can be something yeah. really, you know, something really big to and once you have an opportunity, never shy away from it. Never. Mm -hmm. Never mm -hmm. say no. Mm -hmm. Never. Once you say, do you want to? Yes. I want yes. to be mm -hmm. Always, always, always involve yourself. In it, unless you're not interested in research. But I think mm -hmm. sometimes just little effort is what you need. You don't need to do so much mm -hmm. work. Yeah. And um, I think it boils down to what you said from the beginning. Start with the end from the beginning. Because if you know you want to go for an internal medicine, um, um, let's say residency, then start creating the CV that is worthy of that. I, I think I was telling some group of people, I think a while ago, that people will become American presidents. You just jump there. They know there's a certain CV for that job. So right from high school, they are already, they already know they have to do charity. They already know they have to do that. So I think you can orchestrate these things. Many times, yes, I believe you, in retrospect, what many people do now, it's now think of, okay, what did I do that matches what I want to do? So then you begin to fill in the gaps. But I think it can be more fluid because if you know what you're doing from the beginning, then you know this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. So by the time you are in sixth year, somebody said something to me recently at an interview. It said, everybody may graduate with the same medical degree, pass the same exam, but everybody are not on equal standing. Some people have done exceptionally well with all good doctors, brilliant, but... Um, when it comes to things like this, some people fall deficient, not because they are not intellectually good enough, but inadequate planning um, mm -hmm. is very detrimental. Wow. So run us through the visa process. Um, by God's grace, this person has made it. And um, hopefully they've watched this video, they know how to put one or two things together. So the visa process, how easy it is, how difficult is it? Do you need an agency to run the stores? Are there things you can just do by yourself? Well, I mean, I don't, you don't need an agent to help you with visa. But I think the first thing, and even the American consulate is, mm -hmm. I think they are very big on how well traveled you are, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so I, sometimes in Ukraine, you have, you have an opportunity to take travel to some of these countries for conferences. Mm -hmm. Like, you have the opportunity to go. One or two is enough. Just have it stamped mm -hmm. on, your, on your passport. Mm -hmm. Then if you have opportunities during your medical school, apply for electives in the US as well. There are some programs mm -hmm. that organize mm -hmm. those electives. And I think they are mm -hmm. cheaper and they are mm -hmm. easier for students. Once you graduate, it becomes more expensive and even becomes very difficult to get such. Mm -hmm. So I think those are other ways you can also get visas as students mm -hmm. into the United States. And once you get it mm -hmm. once, it becomes even a lot more easier to get it, mm -hmm. to renew your visa for the, to the US mm -hmm. and all that. Right, then once you match, most likely will need to change your visa as well. You know, to either mm -hmm. a work that must get a work authorization visa, which is a like mm -hmm. one or H one B visa, depending on you know mm -hmm. what you have. So you probably need to go. I want you to match. Need to go to your country to apply for the visa. But I think it's almost automatic. Almost mm -hmm. automatic. You get the visa for the work visa. Yeah. And then we'll how about being certified by the um, by the state where you'll be working? And, mm, um, okay. I mean, once you're done, once you've matched. I mean, for example, the match happened in March. Residence mm -hmm. starts in July, right? I think mm -hmm. from March to July, there's a lot of paperwork that you need to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of signing of documents, a lot of you need to apply for state license. So different mm -hmm. states have different requirements. So I think mm -hmm. once you match, depending on the state where you match, then they will mm -hmm. let you know the things you need to do. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think those are all the things. But once you match, the major thing is to match. Once you match, the rest is not as difficult as actually getting to actually match. Yeah. So, Great. Um, if I want to, if I'm right or wrong, you can tell me the whole process, like you said, although we've already said, um, don't be scared by the sum, it happens little by little. So we're saying the whole process, combining your exams, traveling, down to your final, you know, everything that you need. We're talking about $30,000 at least. Let me take up to $30,000. I mean, <laughs> I mean let's say 15, 15, 20. I mean, it might be might be more than that, but let's say average, around average. $20, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll just put that 25. All right. <laughs> <laughs> At 25, because of course more is um 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 is better. Um would they need any account statement, any proof of all of those stuffs when I'm leaving? Will I need okay. anyone? When you're leaving to, to where? 
when you're now living for the US at that point when you have uh, most likely money. not because so you can be broke and live like you finish all no. you spent all your money and then you yeah yeah you once broke. you've matched right once you have matched and you're applying for the J1 you're mm. coming with the contract that has your salary on it so they know you're not mm -hmm. going to you're not going to the US broke mm. they're going to the US to collect salary so <laughs> they, they don't need the bank statement they don't they don't care you know they, they, they have your contract with them they see your contract yeah. saying that this is how mm -hmm. much you earn every mm -hmm. year or thereabouts so they know you're not going there to become a nuisance so they don't care mm -hmm. about how much you earn before now mm -hmm. they care about mm -hmm. what you're about to you know how mm -hmm. you, you find for yourself when you get there so per annum how, how much does a resident get ah well i mean different average. programs i think it's state dependent as well different programs have different um what is it called different salary mm -hmm. skills and i think it's mm -hmm. on the website you can always check just open a residency program it's an, mm -hmm. and i think it's also specialty dependent as well mm -hmm. so it's not a general salary skill so i think it's always better if you are curious check a program mm -hmm. check mm -hmm. the specialty then you see the salary it's always there it's online any any suggestion why did you pick internal medicine why well i well the thing is i internal medicine is broad right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. that is one specialty that that covers every part of the body from the brain mm -hmm. to the heart mm -hmm. to the, every part mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and um it's the common cause of death worldwide the stick cardiovascular disease you know and mm -hmm. um, i am medicine is purpose driven for me mm -hmm. i had family members with chronic illnesses i'm mm -hmm. like yeah and back in medical school was one special that i really really enjoy studying and you know mm -hmm. and yeah that's really why i said this is what i want to do i mm -hmm. want to be and in that there's so much questions that are not mm -hmm. answered yet in internal mm -hmm. medicine a lot of unanswered mm -hmm. questions you know mm -hmm. idiopathic 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 mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. you know and i think it's something i really want to be at the forefront of i want to i'm very very enthusiastic about preventive medicine mm -hmm. and i think internal medicine is also very high on that as well mm -hmm. you know we have primary care tract and internal medicine mm -hmm. so yeah i want to reduce the body part of food and mm -hmm. the body of you know cardiovascular mortality worldwide so that's why so we'll be seeing you some research works in future and coming up with I mean, some yeah i have yeah. check i have some already you know so mm -hmm. you check i have some papers on that i work with some very brilliant guys mm -hmm. them, yeah it's in the general american association Mm -hmm. So you can, yeah, you can check them out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah just maybe check, you said. Google my name. Google my name. See it. It's there. Google my name. You see it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's nice. You know, I didn't even know some of this. That's why I said some of these things I stumble on those stuff. Some of these things I do in school, I did in school. Some of this research. Some of them I didn't even know they were anything serious. But then I Google my name and some of the things I will find. I'm like, wow. And well, I didn't waste time to copy the links and put on my CV. So because right. it's nice. So all these things are good. Um, finally, um, you, you just got in. Um, what are you, what, what, what's your experience like so far? I mean, it's been great. It's been, I mean, obviously it's not your first time. It's not your first time in the US, but um, yeah. generally, how is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been it's been great. I've not started work yet. You know, we're still mm -hmm. on orientation and all that. So, I mean, I'm just I'm just still very grateful to God. To How do you feel? You're still excited. <laughs> I, mean, not, I mean, I'm I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm always excited about mm -hmm. about the fact that yes, I'm about to start a different phase mm -hmm. of my life and. Mm -hmm. I'm just ready to start, you know, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of anxiety, you know, getting to a new system, mm -hmm. you know, and there's this there's always imposter syndrome, thinking, are you good enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. But I mean, someone said, so, someone said to me, said, the same resilience that brought you here is what to take you, take you. Beyond yes. So yes. I'm, I'm ready for whatever it is. Yes. 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 I agree. I agree with what that person said. So yeah. that same, that's all you have, what you need already. That I think so. You just need to um, just continue and grow, keep right. moving so forward. Just, yes. just willingness, willingness to learn, you know, medicine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think in life, mm -hmm. really just mm -hmm. hope you're open to learn new things and yeah, grow. Mm -hmm. That's it. So. All right, so final tips. I'm in medical school for things that you think that I need. What would you tell me? Mm -hmm. Of course, let's go, let's go by number one. Number one is um, it's never too early to start. You know, mm -hmm. get in, start, 
Mm -hmm. You have, have a plan. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you can just have a mentor. Okay, what do you mm -hmm. really want for yourself? Who has done mm -hmm. it? Reach out to them and let them guide you. Mm -hmm. Number three is surround yourself with the right set of people. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can think you are you are strong, mm -hmm. you are strong built, and you mm -hmm. know, but at the same time, we are who we hang around or we are who mm -hmm. we you know relate with and all that. So mm -hmm. I can you always guard people that get into your space, mm -hmm. guard that very, very key to guard that. Mm -hmm. Then lastly is that um, be diligent with work, you know, because mm -hmm. no matter no matter what you want to achieve, it's mm -hmm. The road to success is very, very narrow. It comes mm -hmm. with a lot of hassle. Mm -hmm. It comes with a lot of difficulty. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. will come, you want to break. Mm -hmm. At the same time, that feeling is amazing. Once you achieve success, trust mm -hmm. me, once you are, mm -hmm. well, like, nah, it's, it's mm -hmm. an amazing feeling. So, um, as far as you, you don't stop working, you'll get, mm -hmm. you get whatever it is you want. Just, yeah. you know, stay by day, be consistent, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Wow, great. I would just add extra four from, the things you already said um, across the, um, the the interview. So um, you insisted that we should start with the end in mind. Um, you spoke about time management as well. You also um, insisted on um, involving in other things outside school. You spoke about talent and all of those stuff. And then you also said pray to God for direction. Um, Cause right. it, yeah, <laughs> when it comes to all this matching and all those um, important things. And I think one common factor in all of your thing, um, things to be saying is God. I remember when you give the four, determination, discipline, and um, dedication. My dedication. And then you said pray to God for help. So right. that's it. Okay, before we round up, I normally do this at the beginning, but this is a very important shoot, so I tend not to start with that. So I love to throw medical doctors under the bus because I'm trying to create just a very funny, weird video, okay? <laughs> so I like to ask all doctors, why did you decide to study medicine? Now I want the whole truth. Uh, well, for me, right, back when I was when I was really young, I, I always mm -hmm. enjoyed, I love science. Mm -hmm. I was really, you know, curious about science, but I had a near-death experience, you know, which when I was oh, okay. young, I, and that was like the first time in my life where I was actually sleeping on hospital bed, mm -hmm. you know, and I was there for like a couple of days, and I saw the way the doctor were coming in, us they're coming mm -hmm. in, and mm -hmm. when I when I was probably finally back, someone told me the mm -hmm. you know roles they played in like early, and I thought, mm -hmm. wow, this is very very um, nice, you know, mm -hmm. God had used someone else to give me mm -hmm. a chance to life. And I think it's mm -hmm. rewarding, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, since I love science and um, having that gift, you know, to mm -hmm. help other people, a lot of a lot of people, that's why when I see patients right now, it's but one thing I'm like, I see this is someone's father, this is mm -hmm. someone's, this is someone's um, daughter, someone's wife, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. like, so I have to go over and beyond to help them, you know, they mean mm -hmm. so much to people. And um, I think it's it's, it's purpose driven and rewarding for me. So I mm -hmm. think that was actually the turning point where I thought, yes, this is what I want to do with my life. And because um, I mean, a life worth living is a life of purpose. Yeah. You must live. You must. There must be the purpose why you're on earth as well. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that was it for me. It was that particular point in my life where I thought, yes, yeah, what I wanted to do. And so far, I don't regret it at all. I don't regret yeah. it. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. And I, I believe that um, you've been an inspiration to a lot of people. And um, I just pray that um, God will continually do amazing, amazing, amazing things with your life. Um, thank you. Thank you, Edward. Yeah. Thank you. This will just be the beginning of many <laughs> stories and many impacts and in thank a new you so journey. Much, I'm, I'm really, really honored friend. to be to be on your on your you know YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> thanks <laughs> right. thank, thank you so much, much. Right. And so thank you so much and thank you everyone for listening and uh, we hope that uh, some way somehow through your hard work you'll be able to tell your own story and in your little way would we'll just all inspire um, someone and just make the world a better place and to all doctors um, keep on doing the great work I think wherever you are um, like Dr. Okpaya said, we should um, learn to just move forward. So you may be thinking of moving to the US, but um, where you are is still a great place to help people. It may not be all that you want, but let's just learn to give our best. And 
I just want to leave with keep moving forward. So thank you for watching and right, click you, on the bro. next video. Thank you, Dr. Okwe. So yeah. All right.